Hello, we're continuing with the laws of Lashon Hara. I apologize in advance, my allergies are really bothering me today, and this is with Allegra D and everything. So we're discussing the prohibition of listening to Lashon Hara, that just like it's prohibited to speak Lashon Hara um, about another Jew, so too it's forbidden to listen to Lashon Hara and to believe it that's spoken by <coughs> uh, spoken about another Jew. So we're on Halacha Dalid, Klal Zion, which is chapter 7, number 4. So not only is it a prohibition to listen to Lashon Hara when someone comes and tells it to you, but even if there's a coal in the city, which means there are ongoing rumors in the city that what this person did, uh, what this person told you is actually true. I mean, there's been long rumors, and it's a case where there's nobody in the city who hates him that would make something up. Even so, even though people have been, you know, there's talk about that guy, that he did this, so even though that's the situation, you are still not allowed to believe it. You're only allowed to be chayshish. And again, we said the differences about being chayshish is that in your heart, you don't believe it at all, and you still treat him like a regular Jew in good standing. You give him an aliyah in synagogue, you give him charity if he's poor. <coughs> but if, for instance, there's a call, someone says that he's a thief, you don't have to go into business with him. You're allowed to be worried and you're allowed to investigate to see if the matter um, is true. Val achas kama v'kama. All the more so she is zar ma'od im rotze l'saper as a davar la'acherim shelo yichavin l'havir akol v'leglosu yoser k'mo shebiyarno la'el b'chal beis sif gimel ein shamaytiv. Like we said before, that there are certain <coughs> times when it's allowed to speak lashon hara to somebody. The case was we didn't learn all the conditions yet, but the general rule is uh, again, don't do this until you speak to a rabbi because we didn't learn all the conditions. But the general rule is, if you are telling somebody something evil about somebody else for a purpose, to protect him. Again, our case where there's a rumor going around town that Shmuel is a thief, and you know your friend wants to go into business with Shmuel, you're allowed under certain situations to tell Shmuel that he's a thief if you clarify that it's true. And when you do that, you can't have intent that you're trying to spread the rumor about Shmuel. Meaning, even though <clears throat> you're allowed to warn somebody to tell him, you know, stay away from this guy, he's a bad guy, I heard a rumor and I investigated and it turns out he's uh, not such a great guy, your intent has to be pure, it has to be because you're trying to protect your friend, your intent can't be uh, that you want to denigrate him more and have this rumor spread around town. If that's your intent, even though you're telling him for a positive purpose, it's still a sin of Lashon Hara. Okay, Halacha, hey. Now, to, we mentioned this before, people, any time someone sees Lashon Hara, or someone sees negative speech, and it's uh, something they don't agree with, they say it's Lashon Hara. But what people don't realize is that certain people you're allowed to speak Lashon Hara about, and it's actually a mitzvah, meaning evil people. And we mentioned this a few weeks ago, evil people in one scenario, which he's going to say is somebody who constantly violates the Torah, who knows better, he knows better, uh, and he violates um, all the time sins which are known about, right? Not sins that people aren't aware of, but but common sins that people know they shouldn't be doing. And this person knows better, meaning he was raised religious. It, it wasn't like he you know, didn't have a secular Jewish education. But somebody who does that and constantly violates the Torah, it's mutter, it's allowed to speak Lashon Har about him. So he says, not only, obviously, if you're allowed to speak Lashon Har, you could also hear, listen to Lashon Har about him. Because Lashon Har, who bestami, she stole everything we're talking about, is about a Jew in good standing. But if already he's established without this evil speech, that he's an evil man, because it was publicized that many times he violated Torah prohibitions that all the Jewish people uh, know that it's their problem, shehu aser, that it's forbidden, keniyof, like adultery, right? Everybody knows that it's forbidden to commit adultery, and this guy goes around committing adultery all the time, and he knows better. So a guy like that, you're allowed to believe Lashon Hara about. On a guy like that, you're allowed to believe Lashon Hara. And not only the, he points out, in the are you allowed to believe 
the Lushan Hara on that topic, meaning, oh, look at so-and-so, he's committing adultery again. So you're allowed to believe that, but even if you say about him something unrelated, that, yeah, uh, he's, a, he's a, our, our example, he's a thief, or he's a, an arrogant guy, so you're allowed to believe that, even though it has nothing to do with adultery, but the fact that he goes around committing adultery all the time and he knows better makes him an evil person, and an evil person you're allowed to speak, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Lush and Har about. Excuse me. Now, another example which we're going to discuss soon is a heretic. Somebody who says that God didn't write the Torah, or he preaches uh, things like that, that type of person is also allowed to speak Lush and Har about. Okay, Vav. Let's say somebody comes to you, we'll call him Ruvain, and Ruvain says something negative to you about his your friend Shimon, but he also says something negative about himself, Ruvain. Yeah, oh, I wanted to tell you that Ruvain and Shimon robbed this bank, we robbed this bank together. So maybe you think you could believe him since he's denigrating himself in the speech and in, in what he's telling you, maybe he's telling the truth and you're not to believe him. Says the Chavetz Chaim, no. If Reuven comes and says to you, yeah, Shimon and I robbed the bank, you're only allowed to believe him about himself that Reuven robbed the bank. You're not allowed to believe him that Shimon robbed the bank. Now again, and like we said, you're allowed to be Choshesh, meaning you can't believe it. You still have to give Shimon an aliyah, you know, in shul and you have to treat him appropriately. But if you're going to go to a business deal with Shimon, you're allowed to go and to investigate, you know, is this true that Shimon is a bank robber? Okay, we will conclude the learning for today. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free. Oh, someone asked me the other day, I have to get back to them, uh, a question, but they also asked about a comedian. Yeah, if you have a comedian who's denigrating a Jewish person in his, uh, in his set, you know, it's uh, definitely lush and hard. It's prohibited to hear. And Stam, the Rabbeinu Yonah talks about uh, Moshe of Leitzim. He speaks very harshly about people that gather together just to tell jokes. Meaning Jewish people, obviously, were allowed to tell jokes and have a good time. But getting together for that express purpose to hear a comedian, the Rabbeinu Yonah in Shar Gimel has very uh, harsh words about that. So it's not really a good thing to go to a, uh, a comedy night. Okay, thank you to everyone who was listening.